Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. And first off, I have to give a big shout out to my teammates, John Shoemaker and John Long, because that was wonderful. I loved that opening. It was so spring-like and exciting. <laughs> We're here today to have a fun day of learning. We have um, a lot, a lot of content strategies for you, engagement strategies for students, but starting out with Spark, um, Sparkling Instruction. I'm Tasha Burke-Peart, Technology Program Specialist with the uh, Department of Educational Technology. And I have with me today um, our, our buddies from Teaching and Learning. Good morning, I'm Chrissy Tabachnik. I am an elementary science resource teacher. Good morning, Lori Newbarth. I am an elementary social studies resource teacher. And we are really excited to be here. Um, you're gonna have uh, some instruction to, or some uh, training today on um, some really wonderful strategies. Elementary this morning, secondary this afternoon. Today, we're gonna be talking about Adobe Spark for Education. So, um, Adobe Spark for Education. I just want to talk really quickly about what it is if you haven't used it already. A lot of us ha um, may have used it, but um, there are some things to clarify. Adobe Spark for Education is the entire brand. There are three separate components with Adobe Spark. You have uh, Adobe Spark Post, where you can create flyers and graphics and you know memes and whatever you want to use, just little um, wonderful, very, very, very professional looking graphics that you can use um, pretty much in anything. Adobe Spark Page, um, you can create wonderful web pages. Think about reflection journals. Um, you know, you can have a scrolling page of just wonderful content. And then you have Adobe Spark Video. What better way for students to communicate what they have learned than to do it in a video? Those are the three components that we're gonna be going over today. And we have some very good science and social studies strategies. Um, you will be able to get a copy of this presentation on our resource page uh, on our website. So don't worry, we will have all the information for you. We have a little bit of how to, but mainly it's how, it's how you can incorporate it into your uh, regular teaching practice. I know this is a lot going on, but when you get the presentation, you'll be able to um, dive right into this. In summary, I just want you to know um, there are a lot of benefits to Adobe Spark. Having students um, make their thinking visible. That's what our um, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful partner at Adobe, Tanya Averth, always says, making thinking visible. Either one of those um, programs is really good at that for students to show what they know. So I highly encourage you to um, try infusing Adobe Spark into your normal lessons. And we're gonna have some really good ideas on how you can get that done. So first off, we're going to just start off with Chrissy. She's going to talk about some science strategies. Good morning. So Adobe Spark is really great for to give students another choice and another way to show what they know, and also for teachers to create something new for their students. So it's not necessarily something that has to be based on possibly like a standard. It could be maybe a post a teacher wants to create to welcome their students back to class. So I'm going to show you some things that I actually worked on from a student perspective as well as from a teacher perspective. So right here, this was based on our kindergarten standard for living things, and that's observing plants and animals, how they're alike and how they're different. So this is an example of what a student can create in Spark. A teacher can actually provide the title and all of the terms, and then the students can go into post and use all of the tools on the side to create this flyer. They can then download the flyer, they can share it with you via Google Classroom, they can create a JPEG. You can even print this and you can display it all around the classroom. And it's very user-friendly. It's a lot different than our other platforms. It's very user-friendly. All of the information and all of the tools are actually on the screen for the students. And just a simple click and they're able to add all of these images, all of the text as well. 
Here's another example that if you were to create a template where you put in all of the information and then the students can then go back into Spark or they can go into slides and actually add the images. So you can download it as a JPEG, add it as your own template on Spark, share it with your students and then the students can add the images. They can type in an animal that hops or they can type in any type of animal that has fur and they can add those images themselves. So Lori is going to show you now how you can use Spark with social studies. Lori, we have you muted. We need you to unmute there. That's okay. Sorry about that. Um, I have uh, created a timeline for uh, Unit 6, Everything Changes, and we studied the communication inventions. So I put this together, put the years, and then the pictures. The students can use the template and find the images through the Spark, through Adobe Spark, so that they will have their individual communication timeline. Chrissy? What I did for you for Spark is actually showing you kind of like a flowchart on how to do everything on Spark. So I'm gonna actually go live. This will be available for you. You can print this as a PDF. You can share this with your students and then they just keep it maybe in their notebook, keep it in their desk. But this is a really very simple user guide on how to use Spark. But I'm gonna actually go live into Spark to show you how user-friendly it is for all grade levels. So going directly from your portal, you just type in Spark and it shows up right away. And this is available for students as well. It takes a couple of seconds for everything to load. And you can see I've created some things already, but I wanna show you specifically post or flyer. So you will click on the plus sign to get started and choose flyer. And they always have a cute little saying when you go into either post or page or video. Now you can start with a template. You can type in anything you'd like here for a template. You can actually start from scratch if you choose to. So I'm going to do a template called the body. I was thinking of my kindergarten students. And obviously we wanna find something that's very appropriate for our students. So this would be a perfect template when we talk about the senses. So we're going to create this template. What's really great about this is everything that the students will use is right here on the side. It's right on the screen. They don't have to go to file. They don't have to go to anything to actually search for it. So let me enlarge this a little bit so I can show you the features of this. Now you can have your students search for the template. You can go live with them. You're showing it to them on their screen. They're working on their Chromebooks and they're doing the exact same thing that you're doing. These are icons. And let's just say I don't like this for hands or for the sense of touch. I can just click on it. I can replace my icon and I can type in the word hands and several come up. All right, I like this one because then we can talk about washing our hands as well. Maybe I wanna make this a different color so it matches the background. So I can just edit and it changes the color. You can go and you can change the font, you can change everything about this. And then let's say it's exactly how we want it and then the students are ready to work on this. They can use a template for their text. This is a little bit fancy for something like this. So they'll add their own text. So we use our eyes to see. Now that font's very large. You just drag it, drag the corner, make it smaller, and just pop it right into the spot. When the students are done, they can download this PNG, JPEG, or PDF, 
or they can share it with you. They can invite you to see it, or they can add you also as a collaborator. So it's a really great user-friendly program for our students, all grade levels, K to five can use this. Um, and again, it's something where you can just pop it up on the screen, you can walk them through this, and then they're gonna become professionals in no time. So now we want to show you Page. Page is a web page, like Tasha was saying, where you can really just like kind of scroll through everything. And I was thinking of the different use uses for Page. One would be an interactive notebook that you can actually start right at the beginning of the school year. And another thing I was thinking is this year we went 100% digital with our elementary math, science, and STEM fair. And I thought about how great this would have been at the beginning of the year for the students to use to actually do their fair projects on to display their projects to their class and their school. So possibly an idea for next year. So I have two examples for you for Paige. The first one is going to be a fifth grade example using unit eight, which is where the students are right now, which is the amazing human body. And then it goes into a second grade example that you can do at the beginning of the year doing using the first unit, Discovering Science. I had so much fun making this. So if I had a ton of fun doing this, I can't, you know, the students are just going to love this. So you can pick your background. I chose a simple leather background, but they could pick any type of notebook background. They put the name of it, they put their name. And then as you scroll, and again, remember this is a fifth grade example, you actually add the images yourself you can add videos from YouTube, and you can add text as well. So we have the brain and we have our vocabulary, and then we're going on to the heart. And all of these pictures are available within Spark. So I don't have to go anywhere to find any of these images. If I want to use another image, something that I've downloaded that I think is wonderful, then I'm able to do that as well. I can choose from my images on my computer. You can do a split screen where you have several images and then still the vocabulary. And then now we're going into second grade. So discovering science, the nature of science. Same idea, using it as an interactive notebook where the students have their vocabulary and then they can choose a simple image. All I typed in was scientist and the number of images, it's just endless, the number of images that come up. So a wonderful tool, something really great that I would, I hope everybody can actually incorporate into their classroom next year. Okay, Lori, you wanna show them your social studies page? We have you muted again, Lori. I am so sorry. I just wanna emphasize, it doesn't have to be something elaborate. It can be very simple. So what I have uh, created is a um, graphic organizer for first grade with everything changes. And they're comparing schools from long ago to today. So this is the teacher version or the completed version. And we're comparing the writing. So this was long ago or then. And today we used a computer. Then we have reading. Long ago, you had the uh, lamp in the worn book. And today we have our eBooks. So that's just a simple um, graphic organizer that can be used. Also, here's a template if you wanted the students to be able to put their own pictures from Adobe Spark, then, now. Then you have your reading, then, and now. So that's just an idea of something that anybody can do. This is first grade. Now there is a um, flow chart of how to uh, create these, but I'm gonna take you into the portal, which you're already in, and show you exactly how to create a new page. So, 
let's go up to, we go to the blue plus sign. And we're going to do web page. Then we're going to add a title. Um, let's do it as we're going to do long ago. And today, transportation. And it's got spell check. If you want, you can put a subtitle. Then you're going to scroll down and you're going to see pluses. So you're going to click on the plus. This one up here is if you wanted to add an image to your um, title. So you're going to click on this plus and you're going to decide if you want a photo, text, a button, a video. And these are the different ways you can set this up. I'm going to do the split screen and let's go ahead and let's look for an image. We're going to go to find free photos and transportation. And it kicked me out. So let's look at for transportation. We'll say now we could have a car. So let's say I don't want my picture here. I want it on the right side. I can move it. And now I can put a text box. This is today. And if we wanted to add more text, we can. We can also adjust the size. We can bold it. And then you can keep going. This is also good for an interactive notebook or to keep all your vocabulary or all your notes. So once this is done, you can preview your work. And this is what it would look like. And then you will share your work. We're going to publish it and share the link. So it'll get published and then it'll come up with a link that you can invite others to look at or even you can invite them to alter it. Chrissy? Okay, now we're going to go into Adobe Spark video. Video is wonderful because it, in addition to post, in addition to page, this is now where the students get their voice. They can actually make video recordings. They can record over um, each individual slide. So it's a little bit different than how they would do, let's say, a Google slide and then create um, using Screencastify. So they also have a longer length with this, so the video can be a little bit longer. You can add music. You can have a lot of fun with this. I had a great time making this video. So I put myself as a fifth grade student. I, we had just finished our unit on the human body and my teacher assigned me with the skeleton. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna jump into Spark. I'm gonna make a really awesome video. And again, this is based on the fifth grade standard for living things and identifying the organs in the human body. So again, all of the images were taken directly from Spark. I just typed in what I wanted. I typed in skeleton 
And then I added in text. So you can actually do different things with this video. You can have a split screen, you can have a full screen with text, add music, students can speak over this and narrate. So I'm thinking of how they can actually do their math, science and STEM fair. And this would be amazing. You adjust the time for each slide. So if one slide has more text than another, you make that a little bit longer. So what I did right here is <clears throat> they will actually add some credits for you, but I added additional credits because I did receive or I did get some of my images from STEM scopes, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as some of my information from STEM scopes and kids health. So I was able to add where I received or where I took that information from for copyright reasons. But if a student turned that into you, think about that. Like they, they understand the concept. They are able to reteach the skeleton to their peers, to their teacher, to they can share this out on so many different platforms. So Lori, go ahead with your amazing social studies video. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I was so amazed at how simple this was. I, I don't know where it's been the whole time because this is really great. What I did was I took a unit seven for social studies and uh, government for part one, and I used it as a review for uh, fifth grade. So let me show you what it looks like. I don't know if you can hear the music, but there's music playing. I adjusted the time based on the amount of words. I did speed it up a little bit for this demonstration, but anybody can adjust the time. Some of these uh, images were imported. So I put down underneath the image where it was um, obtained from. Now, that would be a, a um, video that a teacher can show as a review. Also, students can do their own. And what it is, is I use the same setup, the same format, but had uh, sentence frames. So here are the sentence frames. You've got the title, a constitution is, and the student will fill that out. Once they have filled out all the slides using the uh, sentence frames, then they will put it together, add the music, or they can even talk and tell you what it is and read it to you. I believe the kids will really enjoy being able to bring all that information together in a fun way.
Okay. Uh, Chrissy. Oh, no, Tasha. Tasha, are you up? Yeah, here I am. <laughs> so um, those are some really, really, really great examples and simple examples. And I read in the chat uh, about these flowcharts. It, it was a really good idea. You can actually print these out and have these, you know, post it somewhere because it's a really simple diagram um, flowchart on how to use uh, Adobe Spark. So um, either one, Spark post or video. So what I'm going to do is um, go live really quickly for uh, Adobe Spark video just so that you can see, um, again, this blue um, plus sign is one way that you can get to the applications or um, if you wanted to do a slideshow video, you can go from here. Um, so I'm going to click the video. And um, I love the, uh, Chrissy had mentioned the little sayings that uh, come up. Um, so it's telling me to go ahead and put a title in here. So I'm just going to put a title. <laughs> and next, and this is what I really like um, is they have the story templates. So, or you can start from scratch. So depending on what your standard is, depending on what the student is trying to show, um, you know, show and tell, teach a lesson. Oop, it's going very fast, teach a lesson, or they can make up their own. Um, I'm going to just for the sake of this demonstration, do a show and tell. And once it pops up, you'll see uh, all the different components and how easy it is for your students to um, just dive right in. Um, there is a little intro video if you wanted to show to show everybody um, how to get started, a little tutorial. We're going to skip that right now. Um, but what we see is across the top, um, you have your preview when you're done. This is your share. You can also download it as an MP4 and you can uh, upload it. Students can upload into the Google Classroom. Or if you had a Google Classroom, they can share the link, whichever one you want them to do. Um, there are different layouts, different themes. Um, and you can choose your music. And all this music is, um, you know, Creative Commons, which I really like. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, getting permission for anything. Because as Chrissy mentioned, at the very end, the credits will show up, giving credit what credit is due. So the... Um, bottom bar and i really like this because think about it for your students this is like you know they're sitting there with the trying to figure out how to get started i'm using this template and it's telling you so the first slide would be the title slide second slide about me what is it if this is a show and tell why is this important show it so you're on the main page the main title slide right here and this plus sign We'll let you know what to do. You can do video clips up to 30 seconds, I believe. You can do text, photo, icon. So if you wanted to upload a photo or um, take a photo or find a free photo, this is what I would highly recommend. Let me just show you here. The photos um, come from Bing and Pizza Bay, and both of them are Creative Commons license. I'm just gonna pick a puppy here. Let's choose this one. And there are different ways that students can lay this out. So let's say I wanna actually say something. I can do a split screen. I could put a caption at the bottom. I could put a title here. So there, there are um, you know, different things that they can do. They could put different pictures, text. And then this is what is just absolutely, absolutely wonderful is that um, they can record their voice. And so you can actually have them think or, or uh, speak, um, you know, their learning um, and making their thinking visible. So this is a wonderful thing. And so after they're done, they can preview it. You can add more slides and have a very professional looking video um, that they created on uh, Chromebooks. So again, you will get a copy of this presentation. We will have this um, on our website, um, as with all the presentations from today um, at this bit.ly uh, slash students bloom. Um, and we can't wait to see how you use uh, Adobe Spark, all of the different components, or just one if you want to pick um, in your 
classroom. We have some additional resources here. We know we went kind of pretty fast um, showing you and didn't really go into detail, but don't worry. For each one of these, um, it is linked and um, lots of different examples, how to make it step-by-step -step instructions, you know, adding music, subtitles, um, all that information is available for you. Also want to mention the education exchange. I love this education exchange. On here, you can have um, information about free courses. Um, there's tutorials, there's uh, self-paced courses, and also um, lots and lots and lots. I don't know why this is showing up a little wonky, but lots and lots of lesson plan ideas. So I do encourage you to take a look at the Adobe Education Exchange um, for these wonderful, uh, wonderful ideas. Um, this just recently came through my email, which I think is, again, just priceless. Um, this is a professional learning kit for Adobe and for Adobe Spark. So um, with this resource, you get and this is actually for secondary I'm looking at, but with this resource, um, you get a lot of information. Um, I'm sure they have something on here for elementary, so I'm gonna re-link the proper one. Um, that one is secondary. And then here's a spark guide for schools and educators. Um, so we have tons and tons and tons of information here for you so that you can get started with Adobe Spark. And before we sign off, I do want to show you um, a couple of wonderful things that are happening. Um, wonderful things that are happening um, soon. Our tech conference, yay! We're having a virtual tech conference on October 15th. So information about the tech conference will be on our website, edtechtraining, palmbyschools.org. So um, please stay posted um, because we're going to have some information about our tech conference on there. And then also, um, nope, we have contact information <laughs> next. <laughs> we have our contact information right here. So um, Chrissy and Lori, is there anything else you want to say? Thank you for being here today with us. We um we would love to see what your students have created. We would love to see what you've created. So if you wanna either tweet it and tag us, or you can send us an email anytime. Um, if you're in our Google Classrooms for Science and Social Studies, feel free to pop it in there and share what your students have done and what you have done with others to inspire everybody else. And Lori, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry about that again. Um, you will be amazed at how simple and how professional looking that these um, ideas are. It, it, it's just amazing. So try it out. On behalf of the Ed Tech Department and Teaching and Learning, thank you very much. And stay tuned because we have a lot of really great um, sessions planned today. Thank you. Thank you.